Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church, Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master. Thank you so much for joining us again. Monday, we began a new series entitled Refuse to Be Miserable. And yesterday, I gave you some points from the Word of God on how not to be miserable. For example, be honest about your feelings. The revealing of feelings is the beginning of healing. Be honest, but then release your offender. When people hurt you, release your offender and then refocus your life. That is critical because whatever gets your attention gets you. You don't need certain people in your life in order to be happy, which means if you stay miserable, it's because you're not applying the, these principles from the Word of God. The Apostle Paul had some people who were trying to make his life miserable, and he says, I refuse to let you dictate my feelings and my emotions. I'm going to be happy in spite of you. And that's the way that you can be. Now, here's another lesson I think we need to learn about what it takes in order to be happy. Don't compare. Avoid comparing your circumstances and your situation with other people. It's interesting that the word compare rhymes with the word despair because they go together. When we tend to compare what we, what we have in relationship to what other people have, we tend to be in despair. Don't compare. Just look at your situation and say, you know what? There's some things that are maybe challenging about it, but there's some things that are good about it because there are advantages and disadvantages in any situation you find yourself in. If you say, okay, I'm moving to Florida where the weather is warm. Well, yeah, but what about when the hurricanes come? Well, what about when there's the inclement weather? What about the taxes? And after all, Florida did did vote for Donald Trump. So there are advantages and disadvantages in every situation. Don't compare your situation with other people. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 and verse 9 says this, It is useless, it is like chasing the wind, it is better to be satisfied, it is better to be satisfied with what you have than the always wanting something else. Being satisfied. During the Depression, they used to have a little jingle when things were tight and things were tough. And they would say about the things that people owned. They would say, use it up, wear it out, make it do, do it out. Use it up, wear it out, make it do, or do without. Because it is better to be satisfied. To be satisfied. Because comparing what you have with someone else is the fast track towards misery. For example, when you compare your home with someone else's home, or you compare your family with someone else's family, you compare your job with someone else's job. Happiness is always an inside thing. It's always internally. So don't compare yourself with other people. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12 says this, we won't com dare compare ourselves with those who think so much of themselves but they are foolish to compare themselves with themselves. In other words, those people who like to parade all their stuff around, pfft, I'm not comparing myself with them because I've learned uh, what Paul says, how to be content. Now, that does not mean that you can't get great ideas from other people. Uh, my wife, uh, she loves to watch HGTV. And she, she likes to watch HGTV because she gets all types of ideas on how she can fix up our home or how she can take something that is old and repair it. And I'm not saying that you should not get ideas from other people. I'm not saying that you can't admire what other people have. But just because you admire it don't mean you have to acquire it. I have a friend of mine who's a great man of God, a good man. And uh, he always uh, has driven nice cars. But the, the thing I like about my friend is he would say, look, man, you know, if you need my car, don't you pay the car? No, I'll let you drive it. 
Oh, you need to go somewhere? I'll pick you and your wife up. We'll take care of it. In other words, I don't have to acquire it just because we had what he had. Uh, I can learn to appreciate what he has, and he's going to even let me take advantage of it. So admire, but you don't have to acquire. Now, when you admire and you have this, this deep need to acquire what other people have just because you are comparing and competing, the word for that is coveting, coveting. Now, you know that there's 10 commandments and coveting made the top 10. Exodus chapter 20, verse 17 says this, do not desire another man's house. Don't covet another man's wife or his slaves, his cattle, his donkeys, or anything else that he owns. Don't covet what other people have. When you have this desire to acquire that you got to have what everyone else has, that is the fast track towards misery. See, uncontrolled desires is coveting what other people have instead of learning to be content with what you have. Contentment is very important. Contentment is another word for containment. There are senior citizens complexes that are called content apartment complexes or contained apartment complexes, which means that um, a content or contained apartment complex for seniors means that everything they need in that apartment complex is right there in the apartment. They don't have to leave outside the apartment complex. They don't have to, for example, they don't have to um, go outside the apartment complex to go to the doctor because there's a doctor in the apartment complex. They don't have to go outside the pharmacy because the pharmacy is inside the apartment complex. They don't have to go outside and to the beautician because the beautician is right there. Everything they need is right there in the apartment complex. And when you are in a Christian, then everything you need you got it already. You don't have to go outside to get it because your happiness is not predicated on what you have, but it's predicated on who you know and what type of relationship that you are in with God. First Timothy chapter six and verse six says this, but godliness with contentment is great gain. If you can learn to be content that's the greatest gain. That's the greatest benefit that anyone can ever have. I don't have the desire to acquire. I can admire without having the need to acquire. I can approve what you have, but I don't have to have it because the, the house I live in is okay. The clothes I'm wearing, you know what? It keeps me warm. I got the basic things that I need, and I want to say thank you, God. Now, now, am I saying that you should not want to acquire things? It's all right to acquire things. Anyone who says, Christians should not have a desire to acquire things has moved from Christianity to Buddhism. You have to have an instinct to acquire things or how could you acquire more knowledge? How could you acquire more spirituality? How can you acquire, how could you receive more truth if you didn't have the desire to acquire more truth as we do these powerful points to ponder? But the need to acquire stuff in order for validation is what the scriptures warn us against. Because if you need validation by stuff, then you're gonna get more cars, more clothes, more stuff, more money, more appreciation. When in fact, if you don't get it, it's okay. Because you've learned something that Paul learned. And that's Philippians chapter four and verse 12. Paul says, I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in every in, and in, in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Amen. So Paul learned how to be content. Be careful of when and then thinking. Many of us think like this. When I get the job, then I'll be happy. When I graduate, then I'll be happy. When I get out of the hospital, then I'll be happy. When I lose the weight, then I'll be happy. When this bill's paid off, then I'll be happy. When, then, when, then. This is the day. 
the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it because your then may not happen or your then might not be what you think is going to be. So right now, ask God to help you find your joy and your happiness right now, your contentment, your satisfaction with where you are right now. If you woke up this morning, you're blessed. Folgers or whatever the coffee company says, the best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. No, the best part of waking up is just to wake up. And if you woke up this morning and you can put two feet, one foot in front of the other, you can, you can walk on your two feet and put one foot in front of the other and you're breathing, you're blessed. You're blessed. So congratulate what everyone else has, but just say, God, thank you for what you have given me. And somehow when you do that, you the kind of person that's really saying, I refused to be miserable. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. And don't let us compare, because when we compare, we despair. Help us to admire, but we don't have to acquire. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to wait until something happens, when and then, but we can be content where we are right now. Bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with us again for another powerful point to ponder. And uh, if you don't have a church home, everybody needs a church home. You come and connect with us here at St. Stephen Church. Regardless of where you are across the country, come and unite with us. Uh, we love to have you. Just email us at newstart, newstart at ssclive.org. Newstart ssclive.org. And in closing, you know our salutation during COVID-19. Stay safe, stay sane, and if you can, stay home. I'll see you tomorrow.